So let us talk uh, about this DFD data flow diagrams with reference to certain examples. How to create a DFD first of all? First of all, we have to create a list of activities. Then we construct the context level DFD. That is we identify external entity and processes. We construct the level zero DFD. Sometimes context level and level zero DFD are made together. They are known together. This level zero DFD identifies the manageable sub processes. Then we construct level one to n DFD, which identifies actual data flow and the data stores. And we check against the rules of DFD. These are the DFD naming guidelines. The external entity that means it should be a noun. We find for a noun and we assign it as an external entity. The names of the data, the data flow, any verb phrase we count for a process that may be a system name, a subsystem name, and again the noun for data store. So let us create a data flow diagram for lemonade stand example. The operations of a simple lemonade stand will be used to demonstrate the creation of data flow diagrams here. The steps, as we said, we create a list of activities. First, the old way that is will not use uh, use case diagram. New way is will use the use case diagram. So we construct the context level DFD. We identify the source and sink first. Level zero will identify the manageable sub processes, and we construct level one to end DFD, which identifies the actual flows and data stores, as we discussed in the previous section. Now we create a list of activities. First of all, customer order. If customer order comes, the product will be served, and the payment will be collected, and the uh, product will be produced, and then the storage of the product will be done. You also think of the additional activities needed to support the basic activities. What are these? Customer order, serve product, collect statement, produce product, store product. Now we have to order the raw materials also to make the lemonade. We also have to pay for the materials, raw materials, and if some labor is involved, we have to pay for the labor also. Then now we have to group these activities in certain logical fashion, and we will see that what functions they do. So we combine them with respect to their functional areas. This is one functional areas. These means customer order, serve product, collect payment. These are the first category we can categorize, and we can put in. Then product storage, produce and store, order and pay or payment of raw materials, and then pay for labor. So now we create a context level diagram identifying the source and sink. This is the cons uh, construction of context level DFD, which identifies the source and sink. So there can be three of them. First of all, customer. Which will come for the lemonade. They will consume the lemonade. The vendor who is going to sell it, and the employee who are working with say vendor. So this is lemonade 0.0. Customer will customer will order for lemonade system. The product will be served to the customer, and the payment after consuming the product, the payment will be done to the lemonade system. What vendor is doing? Vendor will. Receive the payment, good payment, and the purchase order. You will accept. What about the employee? He may forecast the sales. Some production schedule he may make. Payment, of course, customer will pay to the employee, and the time being worked by the employee. All these can be included in the Lemonade System 0.0, which is the context level DFD. Then the construct level zero DFD, that is level zero DFD, we identify manageable sub processes. That is, we create a level zero DFD identifying the logical subsystems that may exist. We know that these are the logical subsystems we have made. So, customer, first we have to do or make different things for sale, production, procurement, and payroll. Right? That is, pay for labor will be in payroll. Procurement will be for order raw materials and pay raw materials. 
Production and storage will be in production. Customer order, sub product, collect payment can be in sale. So, customer will order to sale, sale forecast, payment will be done to sale. Then, the production, the produced as or product served to customer. The employee, of course, the production schedule will be in the production. The vendor will receive goods from procurement, purchase, go, purchase order to the vendor, and the payment will be done. The order decisions to procurement and the payment will be done to employee by the payroll and the time work according to the time work the payment will be done. This is level 0 DFD. Now we come to level 1. So we create a level 1 decomposing the processes in level 0. We need to identify the data store. So we have made the, con uh, the context level the 0 DFD now 1. 1 to 1, this 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, .1, that is 1. n level DFD. We identify actual data flows and data stores. So, customer order, then uh, so we will take it as a customer as the identification here, then the order here, and the payment. So, we are trying to decompose the processes in level 0 here. This is level 1 DFD. So, customer order will go to record order 1.1. Payment will go to receive in 1.2 and sales forecast, this product or produce sales forecast 1.3. This is level 1 DFD. Now, what we have done is we have made it for customer order and collect payment. So, customer order payment. Now, the second one we will choose is serve product, produce product and store product. This is level 1 DFD. Order raw materials inventory. The 2.1 for serve product, product order will go here. 2.2 for produce product, production schedule. And the store product, that means the production data will go here and then it will interact store product for quantity produced and location stored with the inventory. So this is how level 1 DFD for serve product, produce product and store product. Then we come to the raw materials. So, level 1 DFD for these will be we have purchase order, raw materials, receive items and vendor. 3.1 produce purchase order, 3.2 receive item and 3.3 pay vendor. So this will go to payment, you know, we already have payment. The purchase order, produce purchase order will go to purchase order. The raw material quantity on hand, the quantity received to raw materials, the purchase order to the receive items. The receive items to receive items, of course, and then the receive item to the pay vendor. The payment approval only to pay vendor, then the payment is done. Now pay for labor. This will make one more 4.1 that is construction level 1 for this. So time work, time cards, employee, up, then the payroll and the payments. So time cards, unpaid time cards for to calculate the payroll. The record time worked to time card and the employee to say employee ID will be provided by this. And this is time work, this is payroll request. This will add on to employee and paid time cards to produce the payment approval. And this payroll will give the approval and the payment employee will be paid through the payments. So this is how we uh, decomposed the process. We started with lemonade system. Level 0 included the sale, production, procurement and payroll. Then sale, we divided into reorder, uh, record order, receive payment, production to serve product, product, uh, production, store product, procurement to produce, purchase order, receive items and pay vendor and then payroll to record time order, calculate pay order or payroll and the pay employee. Now let us take one more example that is bus garage repairs. So the bus come to a garage for repairs. A mechanic and helper perform the repair, record the reason for the repair and record the total cost for all parts used on the shop repair order. The information on labor, parts and repair outcome is used for billing by the accounting department and parts monitoring by the inventory management computer system and a performance review by the supervisor. So in this case, we see that we have to look for the nouns, we have to look for the verbs and of course understand what is going on. Your understanding is important, is the key. 
then only you can formulate the ideas or the reason for taking nouns and verbs so what can be the external ex entities as we have just read this bus mechanic helper supervisor inventory management system accounting department the key process that is the system is first have you have to perform the repairs and then to store the information which are related to the repairs that is the system the processes as we saw in the problem statement is we record bus id and reason for repair we determine the parts needed perform the repair calculate the parts extended and total cost and try to record the labor hours and the cost for the payment and the data store would be the personal file the repairs file the bus master file list and the parts list and the data flows would be repair order bus order part order employee time card invoices these were the data flow or this would be the data flow and these were the and this will be the data stores so let me make this directly the bus garage context diagram and i hope by earlier discussion you understand by now this is a bus repair system we have helper mechanic bus supervisor inventory management system accounting so this is how they uh, interact as per what we have decided according to the external entities key process area processes and the data stores and data flows so this is what you can make by the problem statement so these are the two examples we have taken in different scenarios and in different way we have tried to develop the dfd thank you so much take care